Good afternoon, Cape Breton. It's Pam and Marie again, and today we travel to the Cape Breton University, and we are meeting with this gentleman here, Patrick Doyle, who's been in the film industry, I'd say, how long? About 30 years. About 30 years. And he is trying to uh, collaborate with a group here um, from Enactus, and that's for... Can you explain it? Sorry. Sure. Uh, let me introduce this gentleman as well. There's a few students here. And this is Nick. Nick McDonald. McDonald. And this next to Nick here is Navy. And over to next to uh, Patrick here is G. And these students are all involved with a group called Enactus. Can you explain what Enactus is, Nick? Sure. Oh, G, G's not in an <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. It's okay. And what is an So basically, an Actus is a student-run, um, non-for-profit organization, and what we do is engage in community empowerment projects that span the range of uh, social, economic, and environmental issues. There you go. Okay. And you, Patrick, have got um, starting a short film. Plus challenge, yes. A youth, challenge. A youth film plus challenge. That's the uh, first of its kind that I'm aware of in Cape Breton. G is on uh, is on the committee with us. She, we're both co-executive uh, directors of it. It's called Shortcuts. Uh, the website is shortcutscb.ca, mm -hmm. and the idea of Shortcuts is for engaging youth, and we put quotation mark around youth being anybody under forty. Right. That being said, and I keep getting my knuckles wrapped for the, I keep no, but I keep getting my knuckles wrapped for saying we will accept a project from anybody who wants to send us something. It doesn't really matter the age because we do have an open category. Mm -hmm. But what the idea of shortcuts is basically meant to do is, I have a big vision of Cape Breton Island having a film community here, which will develop into an industry yes. and when you're trying to start something new I think the best way to do it is start at the grassroots level Absolutely. and that's engaging youth that are our next generation of filmmakers yeah. and this is our way of reaching out to the island and saying show us what you got show us what talent you have yes. we're basically I like to describe it as raking the leaves to see what nuggets of gold there might be in those leaves right. and uh, and we the, the project's launched on February 1st mm -hmm. and it goes until March 31st is the deadline to get your movie made right. and in uh, so through the month of April we'll be screening and the uh, jury will be screening all the films mm -hmm. and we're gonna have a gala in, um, in May on May 2nd at the Hast. and I'm sure G is our, also our social media uh, person and I'm sure she's got something to add. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what, have, what part have you been taking in all of this? Um, well, I handle all the social media stuff, so creating content for posts and doing interview stuff like this. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a really awesome opportunity for young creatives and I'm super glad to be involved with it. Yes, absolutely. Well, to fill at, for as far as the talent in Cape Breton, I mean, we know, we've been known for it. Have we not? Okay. Oh, yeah, How I, many people be, came off and decided Well, besides, besides our uh, our natural beauty and our natural mm -hmm. resource of, of, of the beauty, mm -hmm. we also have a huge human resource that we've been letting leave this island for far too long. That, but at the same time, being here at CBU is such a unique opportunity because I think there's a lot of talent that we may not even be aware from other parts of the world mm -hmm. that are in Cape Breton getting an education, a lot of them wanting to stay here. So this is kind of a, a, a unique spot to be to be talking about this because we don't know there could be people that have worked in the film industry in other countries that are here. If I have the numbers right, I believe we uh, this year we have over 3,000 foreign students attending college here at our university. So there, there could be a range of talent out there that needs to be discovered. And uh, so you were trying to collaborate with the parents to see if they have a film that they would like to submit? To no, it's name? it's more about, uh, we're, you know, we it's like you guys. We're trying to um, access all of the 
resources and opportunities we have. I, I look mm -hmm. at an actress as a resource, mm -hmm. as a collaborator of maybe they've got input into what we're doing, That's maybe right. they they maybe they can get the word out. It's all yeah. about on this island the tough thing is is getting the word out and getting feedback and response from people. So I, I didn't know of an actress until about three days ago, mm -hmm. and when I saw what they're doing, and now having heard what they're doing firsthand, I mean, I think even they like to help build a community. That's what we want to do with Camp Well, and when it comes down to it, I think uh, that might be a way of slowing down so many of our youth that grow up here from leaving. Um, is to consider what their future will be. And uh, we absolutely could use all the media attention around any uh, creative ideas and future industry possibly for the island. We've absolutely. done that long enough. Absolutely. I, I, I honestly think it could change the fortunes of the island. I mean, I've, I've worked in it so long, and I've worked right across this country in various regions, and the thing that keeps coming back to me, the only thing different is the location. The industry is the same. The commute. I don't. I don't want to build an industry in Cape Breton Island, and I don't want to shoot films in Cape Breton Island. I want to build a community, and that community will do all of that. The rest of that, exactly. Because it's creative artists coming together yeah. in a collaboration, yes. and there's amazing things that happen when you collaborate. Yes. Well, and you can't find more community-minded people than the people who have. Uh, who do reside here, um, whether it's helping at the food bank or whether it's creating something for our children's future. Everybody plays a part. And I find the whole line is kind of community-minded. I don't have any trouble saying hello to anyone here and uh, vice versa. Yep. So, yeah, it's definitely in a good place to do that. Now, is there anything more you would like to tell us uh, about uh, your friends here? Or what are you doing now that you're not? Uh, this man here has been... You know the Mercer. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's a man I would love to meet someday. I've obviously adored his political views. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of, the, one of the funniest things I've ever done with Rick was the uh, when he was doing his his Rick Mercer show in Toronto, and I was up working on it. And we went to we went out to BC to meet Rick Hansen, and we threw Rick Hansen oh, yes. off a suspension bridge. In, right? in his wheelchair <laughs> on a bungee and it was <laughs> something I'll probably never forget. Yes, <laughs> yes and that is humor too. Yes, absolutely. But you've done uh, work with um, CBC, right? Yep, I've done work for... It's a long list, but I, I mean, when you get into it to the point that I've been in it and I started fresh out of college mm -hmm. working in the industry, um, you know, it's more about... <laughs> the more things I want to talk about are not what I've done, but what I want to do mm -hmm. and where I want to do it. Yes. And well, you have the idea. Well, I, I know, but the, <laughs> and the irony being is, you know, I, I just almost never get to work at home. Right. And it's yeah. it's nice to not have to leave the family to go to work. Like yeah. all the other industries that seem to be supporting Cape Breton Island uh, in a lot of ways mm -hmm. of watching our... our, our our partners and our and our family members leave this yes. island to go off, make money, yes. and I think it's having a devastating effect on the social the social fabric of what the island is all about. Because yes. you instantly, and I feel it myself when I come home, you yes. instantly put yourself into a position where your kids are growing up with one parent, and when the other one comes home, yes. they typically because they feel guilt or or angst about being away, yeah. spoil that the, the children or act differently amongst the children, and I, I just don't think it's a great it's a great no. the environment no. socially for our, our island to continue this way. No. And I think by, I have to by agree. creating a creative a creative community that we can do things on this island yeah. that we can keep talent and keep yeah. people on this island. It, it's a it's, well, there's, it's, a, there's no reason we, we, we shouldn't be able to. Um, we're bigger uh, land wise than PEI. Absolutely. Uh, they're independent with Absolutely. a similar population. And I don't see any reason why we couldn't grow our own food. I mean, everybody needs to eat. I mean, if, 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 I, if our government was serious about our children's future, shouldn't that, that not be where we are aiming our focus? is uh, a future for them. Oh, absolutely. And, it, and again, it comes back to what we're so doing here. So they don't have to be. Exactly. It comes back to what we're doing here today. It's like we are here to 
try to engage the youth that are here getting educated because we don't want to see them leave. We want to keep them here in any capacity we can. Yes. And by creating opportunities for them yes. and by seeing what talents they have, mm -hmm. I think that's a big part of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I see some small changes starting to be made on the island. I myself had to go away from the time I graduated because there really wasn't much of a future here. Industries were all shutting down. Good paying jobs and very far, few and far between. And so I can say I know that and after that amount of time it still seems to be stagnant. So. <laughs> I have a question for you, Nick. So sure. you, you've been in, you say you're in your third year of university. Yeah. And do you see opportunities in Cape Breton for yourself to stay? Or are you yeah. uh, a lot like the generation that's growing up now that, you know, I'm here till I get my education or I'm here for part of my education and then it's yes. off to somewhere else? In interestingly enough, my first year of university, I actually left. So I went to St. Max University because, you know, Pretty much, my friends were like, oh, go away, leave, because the general mentality is to, you know, graduate here, go away, maybe come back later on, but it was pretty much kind of the opposite for me. I went away, and, you know, um, I enjoyed it, but then there was still a piece that was kind of missing, yes. and um, when I came back, I realized, I came back with a different perspective because I've actually had a chance, I lived away for a year, um, meet new people, you know, university, you meet people all around the world, it, it really changes how you think. Mm -hmm. And then coming here to CBU, I just, and being involved in the community, I just noticed that there's so many opportunities, especially in like the creative economy and industry here, that there's, there's a lot going on here that I wouldn't have known otherwise, but you just kind of got to get out there and, you know, meet people like what we're doing now and, um, Learn what's what's happening. And the what internet, people are doing. the internet certainly helps now too. I mean, research is at our fingertips. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. You said something really important there, though. It's it's people finding out about who else is out there. Yeah. And that's that's all part of this whole collaborative social inter interaction and engagement that uh, I think is such a key to it. <laughs> it's funny. If anything, I could say Destination Cape Breton's ad uh, campaign, "Your Heart Will Never Leave," is what is the part that you felt was missing when you were away. It was your heart was still here. Absolutely. <laughs> like, you know, older people, they just they, they notice. You know, they always come back. You know, even if you're away, you know, decades, there's something that always brings you back, right? Yeah. And it's the home of our hearts. Yeah. Yeah, now, and Marie, you felt the same way. Our camp girl here she went away, came back. Thirty years. Yeah. yeah, a lot of us have done that, and there's just there's just a calling to come home. Um, and maybe there's a reason for that now because now we're getting to collaborate, cause the unity, maybe make something happen. This is wonderful. As somebody who's not from here, what, uh, what, do you, what do you, what's your take on, take on that? Um, as an international student here, I've been living here for a year and a half, and honestly, I have to say I'm enjoying it so far. I Personally, I, I do see a lot of international students leaving away for some of my job in Toronto and other big cities. More opportunities there, but for me, I... I find it perfectly fun to find job you're doing in the summertime. There's so much opportunity out there. It's important for you to actually get yourself out there, yes. find opportunities. And um, it's I, I like Cape Breton. It's a really cool community that I've never been before. Um, I'm from big cities back home, and um, I did have a time where I was having a really hard time trying to adjust here. But with um, the help of the friendly people here and just the community around me, I, I get adjust. I get adapt to it really quickly and I, I, I just love it here. Once you go past the snow, right? Yes, when I, 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 when I go past I'll still adapt to it, but it's better. You actually came here in a snowstorm, right? I did. Yeah. Oh, my plan <laughs> landed in a snowstorm. Not so welcoming, but... I don't think it stopped since. <laughs> <laughs> but the nice part about this end of Canada, that's a three month winter spring now. So yep. yeah, I live in northern Alberta eight months. Yeah. Sometimes. So, yeah, we're very grateful here. Would you like to say anything more, G? Um, I don't know. This is your social networking <laughs> moment, G. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's just a casual conversation. You're free to speak about whatever you like. I think Shortcuts is really awesome. Um, I got involved with it because I had planned on doing a film festival through my own business I run, Gillazine. And then I got approached by Patrick and one of our other co-workers. Mm -hmm. And I jumped on their project and abandoned mine. So it's a great opportunity and both of 
them that I'm working on are both involved with creating creative futures for the next generation. That's great. Uh, and she's been absolutely fabulous what she's doing. I mean, but the part that I, the more you get to know somebody, the, the more things you learn about them. And it's like after maybe a month, she says, oh yeah, and I'm working on a screenplay now, and I've really got into this whole love of movies and watching all these old movies that you know, we grew up with, but she's just difficult finding them now. But I mean, it's, you, you have to think though, the film industry would be a great fit for different Island, and to get to work in that industry, I've never... There's days I'm working and I can't believe they pay me because <laughs> when you well when you find something that it's not really work to you it's yeah. there's a, I, I found an article actually yesterday online that I was quoted in from a TV series I was working on and they were asking me different questions it was C and B seen and it was when I was working on Haven six years ago or such. And it was like, they asked me one of the questions, and one of, the, one of my answers was, it was like, well, I just get to work with a lot of great people that you spend so much time with, and you actually get to know them sometimes better than you know your own family members. But it's, they're all artists within themselves and within what they're doing in their trade. And I go back to the collaboration side of it. It's when you put all of these creative people together working on a project and they all feel very similar to the way you feel about what you're doing, what you get is, you, you know, you can't, you can't, get that, you can't get that anywhere else. And then to be happy doing what you're doing and enjoying it. I mean, like you say, it's, it's, it's like never working a day in your life, but yet you're paying you to do it. It's, it's, and we can we can do that here. I firmly believe we can all take a lesson from that old generation of just working to pay the bills. We should enjoy our jobs. Or we're not going to do well, <laughs> I, I I I think there's so many stories that have never been told on Cape Breton Island, and stories that can be told on Cape Breton Island. And it's kind of like Tyler Perry who put all the studios in Atlanta on an old Confederate base. And they asked him, why did you do this, Mr. Perry? And he said, because as being an African-American, if we don't tell these stories, they may never get told. Well, I just flip that and say, being from Cape Breton and growing up in Cape Breton, if we don't tell Cape Breton Unamagi stories, they may get told, but they may also get told the way Anna Green Gables gets told. And that's when somebody comes in shoots all the beautiful stuff that you have, brings in their lead actors for a second unit day to establish them in these beautiful places and then leaves the province or the location and goes off and creates 200 jobs somewhere else. Well, let's have that somewhere else be here and let's exploit the beauty that we have. Let's boost our tours and let's give opportunity. Exactly. Tell our First Nations stories that have never been told. Yes, and there's, and there's a good history there as well. Oh, there's no history there. Only um, about 10,000 years of it. I just yeah. completed watching um, a series on Netflix called Frontier. And that was filmed here as well. I know all of them. I, I've yeah. shot with most of the Newfoundland. Yeah. Yes. So they, but again, they come in, Book of Negroes. Absolutely. Book of Negroes comes in, shoots our beautiful locations. But we let sit dormant all winter long, and we don't do anything there. That's right. Just saying. Yes. Marie and I have uh, some aim at going to uh, some old historical places come the nicer weather. Um, there's a lot that's been shut down or closed down, and um, showing the history that is getting lost before it's gone. So, yeah, there's a lot of stories to be told in Cape Breton. And unless anybody else has something to say, I believe that we'll wrap up with that. So, thank you for the opportunity. Can submit a, a little, a short film? Well, we think, still, still wait, 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 because we're dealing with creative. Correct. Typically, they're usually at the last minute, so I think in the in the week leading up to the right. deadline, we're going to start getting them. But we've gotten a lot of interaction that people are making. I'm going to a school tomorrow in Lace Bay to talk to them, which I know their class is working on projects. And when I and after the March break, I'm going to Deskazoni, and I know there's projects happening up there. So that's another show for Cape Breton Live TV. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll talk again. Bye, guys.